The regular meeting of the Minneapolis Police Conduct Oversight Commission Audit Subcommittee will now begin. Good afternoon and welcome to the regular meeting of the Police Conduct Oversight Commission Audit Subcommittee for July 26, 2021. I am Robert Jackson Pino and I am the chair of this committee. As we begin, I will note for the record that this meeting has remote participation by members and city staff as authorized under Minnesota statute section 13D.021 due to the declared local public health emergency. This meeting will be recorded and posted to the city's website and YouTube channel as a means of increasing public access and transparency. This meeting is public and subject to the Minnesota open meeting law. At this time, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll so we can verify a quorum for this meeting. Commissioner Crockett. Here. Commissioner Sparks. I'm here. Chair Pino. I am here. There are three members present. Let the record reflect that we do indeed have a quorum. Next, we'll proceed to our agenda, a copy of which has been posted for public access to the city's legislative information management system, which is available at limbs.minneapolismn.gov. The first motion is the adoption of the agenda. May I have a motion to adopt the agenda? Uh, Commissioner Sparks, I will make such a motion. All right, there is a motion by Commissioner Sparks before the committee, can I please ask the clerk to call the roll? Commissioner Crockett. Aye. Commissioner Sparks. Aye. Chair Pino. Aye. There are three ayes. That motion carries and the agenda, agenda is adopted. The next item is the acceptance of minutes for the meeting June 21st, 2021. May I have a motion to accept the minutes? Second. All right, I hear a motion before the committee. Will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Crockett. Aye. Commissioner Sparks. Aye. Chair Pino. Aye. There are three ayes. That motion also carries and the minutes for June 2021's meeting are accepted. The next order of business is the acceptance of public comments. I will open the floor to invite comments from the community. We'll limit the public comment period to no more than two minutes per speaker. And with that, are there any members of the community who are on the line with us by phone who would wish to address the commission? I do see one other account labeled guest. And if that person does wish to um, leave public comment. Would love to hear from them. I'll give about 10 more seconds. All right, hearing that there are no community members who wish to address the committee, I will move on to our unfinished business. The first will take up the unfinished business of our no knock warrants. I do believe there is a, an item uh, that should be attached to our agenda. It was received by me, and I do believe the other commissioners received a document um, from our staff uh, last week, possibly even a week prior to that. Um, and just to confirm, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, is that document that I'm referring to uh, available in on our LIMS system for public disclosure? Yes, it's a oh, part of the agenda. Okay. Um, and if I could have staff, um, either uh, Andrew or Christopher uh, uh, speak on behalf of that report, so that way we can hear from your end uh, as authors of that report, and then we can have a discussion and um, potentially move forward with that process. So this uh, this document that was sent out to the subcommittee um, is to really kind of set out the parameters and direction towards this study, this research study. Um, I identified when drafting this, the kind of the background to it, the other areas that we had considered, you know, where we had looked at the um, comparison to other jurisdictions and their their policies, um, 
as well as the current policies and then the previous report that the um, Commission received. So this would be really setting those parameters and timeline for the questions that we want to address in the report, the methodology for gathering that, and then timeline. OK, um, taking a look at the uh, report itself. I. I'm going to just jump right down to the methodology at the bottoms because that's what interests me the most, and I believe that uh, is probably most pertinent, making sure that it aligns with what we talked about. Uh, it's fairly brief, uh, and for those of you who aren't looking at it right now or might be looking at this video on YouTube, uh, the study has three goals. First, uh, to study the reason no-knock search warrants are obtained. Uh, second, the success of no-knock search warrants from law enforcement perspectives. And then third, the health and safety of uh, members of the community when executing no-knock search warrants. Uh, those were certainly uh, the three top priorities that uh, I remember having when we spoke about this last. Uh, and I just want to make sure before we move along with this, uh, if there's anything else either of my colleagues uh, have interest in either tweaking a little bit with that methodology, expanding on it, or narrowing that scope even further, now's the time. Uh, Commissioner Sparks. Hey, I had, had something I, uh, I might want to add, and I'll apologize in advance for not bringing it up. Uh, last meeting uh, just wasn't in, on my mind at the time, but I thought about it since then. Um, but I would be interested in including maybe in the in the methodology something for determining um the the cost for um doing knock versus no knock warrants mm -hmm. um so what i was thinking of was uh in terms of i don't know parameters would be if there's a difference in the number of officers involved for either type of warrant the number of hours involved and the uh the dollar figure like the cost per hour for police officers i think that there was a recent previous study i can't remember which one but i think that determined an approximate um, dollars per hour cost for each officer. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we could use that. I, I don't know. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head for how um, <clears throat> what the date was on that study, but I think that um, disclosing and and having more public awareness of the uh, the cost to the uh, property owners and taxpayers in this city of of what these uh, warrants are would be valuable information. I think that's a great perspective to have. I remember us going on a tangent and talking about that to a certain extent, and uh, I'm glad you brought that back up because uh, it definitely should not be left on the cutting room floor. Um, I totally agree. Um, Commissioner Crockett, do you have any uh, opinion on that matter before we have um, Christopher uh, speak on that? Uh, I, no, I, I don't. Okay. No worries. Christopher. I'll just put my hand down for a second. OK, uh, so I, I think that, that that would be an analysis that we certainly could do. Um, I, I think that to get the most accurate picture of what that looks like, we could uh, talk about having a subject matter expert from MPD um, mm -hmm. talk to the subcommittee. Uh, if that's something you'd be interested in about what goes into obtaining the warrant and then executing a warrant, you know, the, and especially looking at SWAT executions versus, which would be no knock, uh, always be deployed no knock versus a knock search warrant, the number of officers involved. And of course, looking at the time from how long it takes to plan the warrant to the number of officers actually deployed in that operation. Um, I think that would be useful. Uh, another thing that we could also look at is as a way of gathering this data is we might want to um, talk with someone at MPD uh, about um, ways to obtain parts of this data uh, in a more um, efficient way than just looking at the search warrants themselves. So if that is something you'd be you would be interested in, that's something we could try and facilitate. Any opinions on that? I think that might be a good idea. Uh, it sounds fair to me. Yeah, general head nods. Yes, please. Um, in terms of uh, this report, uh, and, and I would love to hear advice from the clerk on this. Uh, do we need to amend this in a particular way to add a fourth 
line to uh, this report in order it, in order for it to be received and filed or because this is more of an outline from the staff's perspective if we've had a conversation and a direction uh, you know initiated do we not have to amend this in any sort of way are we did you say we're adding a line to the we report? are uh, ideally okay. something around the finances Yes, yeah, so then we would amend the report from what I understand. OK, um, then. Uh, Christopher, is it enough to say, uh, you know, adding line four, comparing the financial costs of no knock warrants versus uh, announced warrants, both in terms of uh, costs to the property owner as well as costs to the taxpayer? Is that enough detail for you? Um, I, I think if we were looking at the the cost, we might want to clarify between looking at um, cost in police time, mm -hmm. and then uh, also, if if I'm understanding correctly, the cost of damage to the property itself. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I think you you probably want to to list that as to two two separate areas. So one would be the cost in police resources and time, mm -hmm. and then the cost on um, any damage done to the property. OK, um, so. I will say and I'm going to write this down um, so that way at least I have it written here. Um, uh, the. So for being the financial cost in terms of. Police resources. And point five being the financial cost in terms of property. Uh, damage. I just want to make sure that those two points encompass both taxpayer costs, which would be 0.4, property owner costs, which would be 0.5. Okay, with that, uh, those two additional points, they're being amended. Uh, again, I'm I, I'm just at loss on the procedure or procedure of this because it's a report. Uh, is this something that we need to vote on, um, Madam Clerk, in order for it to officially be uh, included into this report? Yes, and that would confirm that the other commissioners are in agreement. OK, um, could I hear a motion to include such two uh, points as an amendment to this report? Commissioner Crockett seconds a motion. All right, a motion is before the committee. Could the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Crockett. Aye. Commissioner Sparks. Aye. Chair Pino. Aye. There are three ayes. All right, uh, let the record reflect that the report has been amended to include those two additional uh, scopes of study. Within the methodology section of the research and study proposal for no knock search warrants use by Minneapolis Police Department. Um, and with that, um, that was that was the only additional thing that I, you know I wanted to make sure we had a conversation about. Uh, opening back up to the general uh, topic of debate of uh, this uh, research and study proposal overall. Uh, are there thoughts, comments um, that are uh, relevant to this no knock search warrant study? Commissioner Sparks. Hey, I did have a question on that. Um, I know that we were um, we're including um, one of the things that we're looking at is the success of the no knock search warrant from the law enforcement perspective. And I saw the language in here about um, arrests. Um, and I and I maybe it, it just made me wonder if we were going to look at if we're defining success of um, an announced warrant versus a no knock warrant as um, as just arrests or if we would look at something else to determine if uh, if a warrant was successful, maybe not arrests, but maybe if charges were brought that kind of a thing. Um, uh, one thing that I thought of was that if police departments can arrest people all the time, even without a cause, I mean, they're not supposed to, but we've seen that I don't know how many times in 2020 and 2021 at protests. 
uh, of that kind of thing. People just get arrested and then released later with no charges. Are we defining that as success? It doesn't feel very successful to me. Maybe there's something else we can look at when we do the study. Yeah, I'm. I, I would love to hear um, Christopher uh, your thoughts on that. So uh, when it comes to search warrants done on a property, I think one thing just worth keeping in mind is that um, for a criminal con criminal charge or criminal case, they would have to prove the prosecutor would have to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt, a particular person possessed an item which is illegal. So th there are instances where drugs could be found in a property, but they cannot be tied to an individual. So that's just one area that I would that I would point out to. Um, I mean, we, we certainly could look at options for seeing if a case was charged. Um, that might be a bit more difficult to do from, you know, if someone is charged, that's public. If something isn't charged, the reasons for doing so are not public. Um, so it might be a bit more difficult for us to narrow down the reason for that. Um, something else which would potentially exist, but I, I I don't know what the pool would be for cases we could look at for this, would be, you know, search warrants can on occasion be challenged. Um, I would have to do research into figure out if if that pool of data would be a way something that we could cross reference again. And this is all stuff that would be with the court. Um, and from a perspective of MPD data, um, these are decisions that are being made by the county attorney's office. Um, so they're not not made by the same agency and then the courts would be the ones to rule on it. So there is there is just those considerations that the, a lot of these decisions are things that happen kind of outside of what we normally look at. So I'd have to look at the the options available to reference that. And you know, I, speaking of yeah, you know, just speaking in more abstract terms, uh, you bring up a great point. Um, I I did when I was looking at this initial uh, this report the first time that I was looking at it. The two things that I assume we're going to talk about in time, we've already kind of touched on them a little bit, but uh, specifically writing out and making sure that both this group here as well as the public have a firm understanding of the specific data sources that we're pulling from uh and then again cart before the horse but eventually the uh analysis methods the way in which we're actually taking that data and uh you know the way in which we're manipulating the data to make it uh present uh in an eloquent way the points that we're trying to make in this report um, I don't know if that necessarily needs to be here, <laughs> you know, in, in this proposal, but at some point, uh, I think it is crucial that we, we look at that and at least from the, you know, commissioner's perspective, we're able to vet that work to make sure that, you know, the, you know, as, as representatives of the community, we're evaluating that appropriately to make sure that it holds the water that we all want it to hold, right? Um, is that uh, from your perspective, uh, Christopher, is that something that we should try to work into this proposal prior to you going down that path of data collection? Or uh, is that something that we can save for, you know, future meetings through the summer and make sure that we have a, a firm understanding of, uh, you know where you are along in the process rather than preventing you from doing it in the first place so i think um just from from my perspective um it would be useful as the report is developed for us to state exactly where the data is coming from as you say and what range we're looking at so if we if we are restraining ourselves to any particular date range or if data is being excluded what data is being excluded and why and make sure that is in the report as you say so that anyone looking at it can see the analysis that's being made and what if any data we are filtering yeah um and then i also think that when it comes to any recommendations of the subcommittee or of the uh the full committee um using the data you know that would need to be be part of it would be like why these changes in policy are being proposed based on on the data we've gathered um and i would also invite Andrew Hawkins to add in anything else as this is the first kind of study that I've worked on. Yeah. With this office. 
Yeah, no, I think Christopher covered it fairly well. I mean, and the thing is, you know, when we get a methodology, we want to have something that's essentially you know, not set in stone, but like we don't want to be tweaking it significantly, you know, along the way, because then it seems like, you know, as opposed to doing an actual audit, we're doing something with kind of a desired outcome and we just keep changing the, you know, like the scope until we get what we want. But at the same time, like the idea that some new things might come up along the way, I don't, you know, that that's not inconceivable. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I mean, Christopher, I'll defer to you, but as far as some of the sources and everything, it, it's, I mean, that, that is kind of an expanding list and some of it still depends on, um, you know, if we, if we can have, you know, some MPD come help. It's possible they might know of some, you know, methods to get some of the things that we're looking for that we didn't know about right now or that, you know, we've been planning, you know, for an alternative method. So in terms of just the data itself, I think that as long as we've identified what we want, the sources, you know, I, I don't think we need to call out an exhaustive list of everywhere it's going to come from since that'll be documented fairly well in the final, uh, you know, the final report. And to your point, I do believe, you know, that was the whole point of, of today and, uh, you know, receiving this uh, report. Uh, we have successfully defined, you know, the scope of the study and what this uh, audit committee is interested in looking at now. Those five points is the limit of our scope for the time being, unless we have considerable reason to expand that. I want to make sure we are not adding unnecessary work onto uh, what you're trying to do uh, on behalf of the subcommittee. So uh, I think it's it's perfectly fair for us to, you know, ideally by next meeting, we can have not necessarily an exhaustive list, but at least a, uh, a good baseline of what resources are available. Again, I know we've kind of talked about them already um, in in previous meetings, but uh, getting, uh, you know, uh, to specific points that are in, are at least written down, so that way we're having a paper trail and we can eventually cobble this all together into a final report saying, you know, here is our, our concept that we've already looked at today. Here is the data sources and how we manipulated them. Uh, and we can start building an argument for whatever recommendations that come forth from the PCOC. That sounds good. And by yeah, by next meeting, um, I plan to uh, have at least the preliminary data that we're looking for in these in these areas. Mm -hmm. um, and then if if anything does need to be tweaked. We could certainly do that, but I, I think that you know, getting started on gathering the data and seeing what resources we have is is definitely a good a good way to go. Okay. Um, any further comments from commissioners? With that in mind, I will ask the advice of uh, Madam Clerk. We we technically voted on amending the report. Do we need to have a vote on uh, acceptance of this report? Since it's a report, can we just receive and file? I so the report that I have down is approved as amended. Okay, so I'm I am more than happy with that. Um, okay, perfect. Please uh, receive and file this report as amended. Thank you. Uh, I have to go back to my script now. All right, the uh, final order of unfinished business is the matter of coaching. Um, I know when we last left this, there was a, a particular hiccup uh, regarding some litigation on behalf of the city of Minneapolis and, uh, and coaching. Uh, since it's a, an emerging issue, I would ask uh, Andrew, if you could hop back on, just give us uh, uh, either if there's nothing new, give us just a quick 30 second uh, uh, brief of where the current status quo is. If there is something that has been uh, recently updated in terms of coaching, I would love to hear about it. Sure. So as far as my like my latest understanding is that the litigation is still ongoing, so there's not a lot uh, of changes happening there. However, I believe last time I, um, I kind of hinted at this too, but um, we've got a number of uh, like various kind of tableau and public facing dashboards, um, some yep. you know some that we've used internally that we've used in the past. And so um, like Christopher and I have actually been meeting um, now that he's got access and the ability to start to work with some of those um, mm -hmm. to build some of them out. Um, so I think there's you know like there's still there there is still actually like work ongoing. It's just a matter of kind of like what things look like once we're all done. 
um, because in order to get them to be functional and you know and provide what we want them to provide, it's like we have to kind of you know like understand. It's like are we still in the operating within the same universe, or were there some changes in terms of how things are classified because we have to modify the way that they're pulling uh, some of the stuff. But so the work on those has continued. Um, I mean, I'm, I would think too, like Christopher, you can correct me if uh, you think timelines are off, but if that's something where we can have, um, you know, like almost a mock-up version, uh, that's that's done. I don't think it would be an issue. Uh, I mean, there's probably a way to do it where we could kind of just to show you what it would conceivably look like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and if we had if we had to do that, I mean, it'd be easy enough, I think, to do with just like spec data. Yeah. You know, or maybe we don't pull the actual universe. We need kind of, you know, like like just do, just do a mock up to make sure that they would populate all the different areas. You could see what that looked like. Um, and so I think that's something that we can we could still keep working on and, and pushing forward um, if that would be like helpful to the group. Oh, absolutely. I think it would. Yeah. Um, do you have a rough idea on timeline? Maybe not even down to specific days, uh, but like in terms of X weeks out, X months out. Um, what's well, that? What, what's your expectation in terms of a timeline? Again, Christopher, I'm taking liberties with your schedule here. So again, feel free to, uh, to to jump in and stop me. But I mean, I feel like for the ones that we have, if we wanted to just go the route of, I mean, the, some of the, the functionality is already there. It's just like the big lift is going to be, imp is, you know, like because we, we've used this in the past. So the biggest lift is going to be importing everything in, the, like from when it stopped to, to now. Mm -hmm. um, because we had to use we have to use an intermediary database to do that because that's how you clean up all the non public stuff and make sure that everything that it's pulling is correct. Um, so I think like, that's really the biggest part of the lift. Like the functionality is already there. So if I mean in terms of a mock up for what it looks like that you know if we just use again like spec data just to show what it you know like would be year over year. I, that seems like something that can probably get done here within the next month. I would you know I would assume. So I mean it's it's not anything we need to publish. I mean, we could just do either the screenshots or if there's a way to just publish it kind of a demo version of it so you can play around with it. Because um, then I think, you know, the thinking with this too was that, um, you know, from that, like, again, just because, you know, back to the point of like everything has to have a purpose. So like the reason that we're doing this is to basically build out the, like that universe so that we could kind of look at like what the whole landscape looks like and then potentially research and study in that area. Correct? Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure I'm, my, my history is not. Yes, I, I agree. The, the uh, entire point of why we're talking about the yeah. dashboard is so that way we can, you know, to remind the public, yep. we had a presentation at uh, the uh, overall uh, PCOC um, meeting, I think it was what, May or April, probably possibly May, uh, on coaching, where we got a fundamental understanding uh, from various perspectives on where coaching was at, both in terms of MPD specifically, uh, coaching as a tool that is used for state employees in general uh, and got to peek a little bit at the players that go about determining coaching uh, and its practice. And what then once the referral to our uh, audit committee uh, took this up, uh, we started talking about, OK, we, we have an understanding of the policy around it, but we want to make sure practice matches policy and our specific concern is the areas where practice does not meet policy uh, and that's how we got around to the idea of this dashboard because there have been instances where we have access to certain levels of information in aggregate form and uh, at the end of the day what it seems this committee is interested in is uh, the, not necessarily the intent of coaching, but its impact. And uh, finding out the ways in which the impact of coaching might incentivize uh, certain behaviors and practices, uh, either through the process of discipline overall, and again, I'm using the colloquial term discipline, uh, and uh, and basically contrasting that with transparency and time efficiency. And the final decision of this group uh, in previous meetings was, let's start with the dashboard. We would love to get an understanding of uh, the uh, updated version of that dashboard. And then from that information, we can uh, start developing a uh, concept and an eventual uh, proposal 
of research and study like we have um, with the no knock warrants that we just passed in this meeting earlier. Is that where everybody else is at? That's that's where my OK, seeing general head nods. So um, with that in mind, um, and we just, you know, we have heard it will take about a month uh, then uh, if that is the case uh, by next meeting, if we could have an update and a show of that that dashboard in whatever state that it's in, um, you know, it, you know, whatever is able to be publicly available and presentable to us, um, that would be great. Uh, and I think that would be a, a great next step in this process for the coaching part of our meetings. Sounds good. Great. Uh, any other comments uh, from the commissioners on the topic of coaching? All right, guys, I know I've uh, held us late some days, but it looks like we're going to leave early uh, today. Uh, there are no other um, items on our agenda. And since we have concluded all agenda items, um, without objection, I will declare that this meeting of the audit committee is adjourned. All right, thank you to staff who help us with this and the commissioners for